quench. Come and quench. This thirsting of my soul. We're a live school of ministry, folks. Breath of heaven, fill us till we want no more. Grab your Bible. We have a powerful class to get into today. Apologize for the delay, but all is well here. And uh, well, we're live. We're here. Praise the Lord. So. Fill it up and make me whole. It is a prayer. Fill our cup, Lord. Just invite the Lord to fill you today. I lift it up. class. Amen. Oh, Father, we give your spirit praise. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Breath of heaven.
Yes, we can. For your glory, O oh God. Oh, we give you praise in this place. And worthy to be praised. You're the Lamb. Good afternoon for some of you, if not many of you, who are tuning in to this day's Open Your Eyes People. Really, it's not even Open Your Eyes People. This is EMOAF, School of Ministry. We have our Open Your Eyes People broadcast that will be airing on Wednesdays and Thursdays, or will continue to air on Wednesdays and Thursdays and Mondays. But today is our School of Ministry class via EMOAF Church, Evangelistic Ministries of Anita Fuentes Church. God bless each and every one of you for tuning in to today's class. Wow, what a powerful class it will be today as we delve into the following exegesis titled The Gifts of the Holy Spirit. The Gifts of the Holy Spirit. We have a lot to cover in today's class, so let's start off without further ado. Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus, holy and true is your name in all the earth. Father, we're so grateful that you've allowed us this time to Partake of your word. Father, we're asking that you would teach us. Teacher, teach us. Spirit of God, lead us. The Holy Spirit is teacher. And Holy Spirit, let it be made known today that you are God and that you are certainly welcome in this place. 
We need you. We want you. We desire you. We call on you to, to, to bring forth the understanding of, of what it is that you, you, of what it is that the Word of God, the Holy Scriptures, has to say concerning your gifts. Father, we give you all the praise and glory this day for what we're about to receive. If there happens to be anyone who's tuning in, and if distraction is seeking to get the best of them, Father, I ask that you would create an atmosphere right now, that you would envelop them with your love, and that you would bring them under the shadow of your wings so that they can receive this word, this class, in the fullness of joy and in peace by the Holy Spirit and righteousness through him. Father, again, we give you all the praise and glory for what you are about to do, what you are continuing to do in us and through us and to this place. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for the promise of the third person of the Godhead, the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, oh, amen. Ah, hallelujah and amen. All right. Today's class, again, we're going to be delving into the gifts, <clears throat> pardon me, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Now, if you, you know, please take notes. Uh, if, if you're a student of our class, take notes. If you are just tuning in just to find out what's going on here, it's a school of ministry. We uh, air it live every Tuesday. And if you're interested in getting more information, log on to our website, www.emoaf.org, E-M-O-A-F.org, and click on the link titled School of Ministry or Live School. Um, today, uh, we're continuing on in session three. And next week, I believe, we're finally, we'll be entering into course four. We're in session three, course three. But I believe, again, next week, and I, I don't want to go by simple, um, uh, let me just double check this. I'm almost certain that next week we go into <clears throat> course four. Yes, all oh, this is very exciting. Next week will be course for the early church. Anyway, so today we expect to wrap up course three, the Holy Spirit. We are in session three, which is the entirety of the school year under Miracle Signs and Wonders. But for the sake of notes, please put down course three as well, pertaining to the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Last week, uh, we had a phenomenal class on the outpouring and baptism of the Holy Spirit. If you missed it, Please be sure to catch up. We must move on. Now, in today's exegesis, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, I really wanted to give you a full understanding to the gifts of God. The gifts of God. Today's focus will be on the spiritual gifts and manifestations from God, the Holy Spirit. Uh, however, I really wanted to add a couple of more uh, line items pertaining to the gifts that are given from above, God himself. And so I'm going to include the seven, what's called or dubbed motivational gifts from God the Father, the five ministry gifts that are dubbed ministry gifts or ministerial offices from God the Son, Jesus Christ. And again, today's focal point will be on the spiritual gifts and manifestations, which include nine gifts from God the Holy Spirit. Again, I say, do we serve three gods? No, we do not. We serve a triune God. We serve a Godhead, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. They are three in one. Uh, and um, each one have specific gifts, callings, offices, manifestations. And uh, we're, we're going we're gonna to delve right into it. So please, without further ado, write on your notepad or however you take notes, First thing, motivational gifts. And let me list the seven motivational gifts that are from God the Father. Now, before we even go any further, let me show you the scriptural context where you can find the motivational gifts from God the Father. Go with me to the book of Romans, chapter 12. The book of Romans, chapter 12. Today I'll be reading from the New King James Version. If I switch over to the King James, I'll be sure to let you know. Romans, chapter 12. We're going to start in verse 6. And we're going to read from verse 6 through 8. So please be sure to put that on your notes for scriptural reference. Romans, 
chapter 12, verse 6 through 8. Again, these are seven gifts, motivational gifts from God the Father. First, let's read the proof of this. Romans chapter 12, verse 6 through 8 reads, Having then gifts. Say, having then gifts. Having then gifts. Having then gifts, deferring according to the grace that is given to us. Let us use them if prophecy let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. Or ministry let us use it in our ministering, he who teaches in teaching. He who exhorts in exhortation, he who gives with liberality, he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. Now, before I go any further, I really, really want to emphasize the importance of you reading along. Um, this is important because, you know, we take a lot of notes here, and at times, you know, it could be a little fast-paced. And so I, I like to say that, you know, if it's too fast, just know that the broadcast is archived and you don't need to try to, I guess, rush it through if, you, if it's going to be at the cost of you not understanding what we're teaching. However, that will not be excused when it comes to following along in your Bible. Please be sure to have your Bible and uh, turn along with me uh, for all the students of the class because um, we are students of the Word of God. And we cannot neglect this role. We cannot just say, well, teacher, I'm listening to you. You're reading, so I don't have to really follow along with my Bible. Uh, no, you must follow along. If, you, if, you don't even, if you're not even following along in your word, if you're not even trying to follow along, you're not even, you, you might as well, you're not taking it seriously. You might as well admit that and, and, and get it right. Take it seriously because the Lord desires you to take it seriously. So I'm going to give somebody a few seconds. I'm just perceiving it in my spirit that someone was not taking this seriously and actually having me read and them not following, you know, they're, you know, they're, they're following along, but they're not following along. They're just listening to me. Listening is important, but I really, you have to read this for yourself because there's a blessing. When you read the words of this book, Jesus said that there is a blessing and you don't want to be cheated from your reward when it's so easy. So please go ahead and grab it. All right. Let's continue. Let's reread that again. Romans chapter 12, verse 6 through 8. Having then gifts, it's the Apostle Paul speaking, being inspired by the Holy Spirit. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us. Let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. Or ministry, let us use it in our ministering. Who teach, he who teaches in teaching. He who exhorts in exhortation, he who gives with liberality, he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. I love this. I love this. I love this portion of scripture because it lets us know that we don't we 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 we're not called to be or to partake of a gift that that we don't have the grace for. Uh, in these last days, we really cannot afford to do that. We have to be about our Father's business. We must be seeking the face of God so that we can make sure that we are walking in our calling, making, you know, letting it be made known and having our calling be made sure. We, we, we don't want to waste time because it will be burnt up in the end. Uh, you cannot tell the Lord, 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 did I not prophesy in your name? Did I not cast out demons in your name? And God may have called you to another area of ministry. Uh, now, please don't misunderstand me. The point is, um, for many, they are seeking to, to, to partake of another man's work in a field that's already <clears throat> 
pardon me, in a field that's already being worked. Um, of course, prophesying in his name and casting out demons is in his name is biblical and is of the Lord Jesus Christ by the Holy Spirit. But the point is, is that you do not want to partake of another man's work if God has your own field to till, to work, to labor, and to receive the fruit of it in his name. So, again, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us. Yes, by faith, by grace we are saved through faith, right? Not of works, lest any man shall boast. That's salvation. However, when a man or woman gets saved, when a child of God gets saved, they receive glory to glory is what the Bible says. And so from this glory to glory, we get manifold graces. There is an to walk in a particular call that God has for us or the purpose. Now, as a man or woman or child of God that is born again into this in, in, into the kingdom of God. And I, I'm trying not to take too much time on, on these two because I really need to get into this. Sensational gift from God the Father. Number one is prophet slash perceiver. Number two, the second gift, motivational gift from God the Father Ministry slash server. The third motivational gift from God the Father is teacher. Listed in the particular portion. Motivational gift from God the Father is gift. The sixth motivational gift from God the Father is ruler, administrator. Slash compassion. Now some of you are probably tuning in saying, now wait a minute, this is very interesting. I did not know mercy is a gift. I did not know being a giver. You know, there are people who give out of the abundance of their of the Lord that they give towards the work of Christ. They give all that they get from God. And there is a purpose behind that gift. Mercy, compassion. You know, a lot of us would like to think that this is Christ. When we become born again, we, we inherit the character and the nature of God. And this is a gift. A motivational gift to, 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 to bring forth mercy and compassion. For in, you know, I say, for instance, you know, this particular gift, number seven, is, uh, you know, works with missionaries. When, when you have a missionary out in the field, uh, they are moved with compassion to minister the word of God to villages, to tribes, to different tongues and, you know, kindreds. Um, where you and I probably are not moved to do something like that. You will have someone who, who is operating in what's called a motivational gift. They are motivated by mercy and compassion from God the Father to go relocate. So everything that they have and minister to an area or a particular people that it, it would be rare for others to do that. It's a gift. All of these are gifts from the Father. Now let's go on to ministry gifts from God the Son, Jesus Christ. I love this. Go with me to Ephesians. We're going to read two particular portions of Scripture. The first one, I said Ephesians. Actually, go with me first to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 28. Be sure to write that down for your scriptural reference. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 28. And then... Also add the following scriptural reference for this um, for this next list of uh, Ephesians chapter four verse eleven. We're, we are going to visit that here as well in a moment. So you have First Corinthians chapter twelve. Verse 28 and Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. So uh, let's read 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 28. 
And it reads as follows. Let's read it along together, my friends. And God has appointed these in the church. Let's read that out loud together. Ready? Let's read. And God has appointed these in the church. First apostles, second prophets, third teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, administrations, varieties of tongues. Now let's visit our second reference, our, our second scriptural reference in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11 reads as follows. Let's read it together. Let's read it together. Ready? Let's read. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. All right. Very good. So let's delve right into the list. Ministry gifts, five offices from God the Son, Jesus Christ. Number one, apostles. Write that down. Number two, prophets. Write that down. Number three, evangelists. Write that down. And I really want to capitalize my P here in profits because we are talking about an office. Number four, pastors. And last but certainly not least, number five, teachers. Now, when we say teachers, we're not talking about teachers that are part of the maybe, uh, you know, public school board of education. We're talking about teachers of the word of God. Now, is there a call or, a spe you know, a, a special anointing for public school teachers? Absolutely. If they are led by the Holy Spirit of God, if they're, you know, born again, uh, the Lord will um, anoint that one. But we're not talking about um, that particular uh, call. We're talking about the edification of the saints in the body of Christ when we were talking about the mo the motivational gifts of God the Father and now the ministry gifts slash offices. And I really want to put offices in there. So please add with ministry gifts, add offices. All five are about preaching and teaching the gospel. All five of these, and I, I please write that down, all five of the gifts and ministerial offices of the Lord Jesus Christ that comes from Him are all about, write this down, are all about preaching and teaching God's Word. And add this, both Rhema and Logos. Rhema and Logos. Rhema means the spoken word of God. Logos meaning the written word of God. We've, you know, went into those definitions in prior classes. We're not going to do that again. Uh, in, 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 in the reign of word of God, many people are, are really frightened to have the Lord operate through them concerning the reign of word of God. Because it's not specific scriptures. He may give a word that, uh, 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 you know, a prophetic word, that there will be an earthquake that will hit Japan in the next few days. That's not an actual prophetic word. I'm just giving an example. Um, and there are many people who may be afraid to step out on that word because they're not sure if it's from God. Uh, well, you will know by the Holy Spirit because it comes from the Holy Spirit. 
So it's unfortunate that rhema words are not used in, in, in the fear and admonition of the Lord via the operation of the Holy Spirit. Well, you have in other camps or sectors of the body of Christ, it tends to be used quite frequently, but in a very abusive way. There are many people who say that they have a word from the Lord, and everybody now has a word from God. Everybody's a prophet, but yet no one has <clears throat> sought him. <laughs> they don't seek his face. And the Lord says through the prophet Jeremiah, if these false prophets, if these prophets, if these men and women would have just actually sought me, they would have actually went in my presence and sought my face, and they would know uh, the exact words that I would have given to them, and it would have brought forth repentance unto the land. Uh, but that, that you will know that there are false prophets, because there is absolutely no repentance in the so-called bringing of my word that they claim is from me. They prophesy, they prophesy visions of their own imagination. Uh, so that's the other side of the camp. But... Either way, you have ministry gifts, offices, all five of them are from God the Son, Jesus Christ. I've given you the scriptural references. Again, all, all what did I write? Or all, almost as if it's a question. It's no question. All are about, please pardon me, all all the ministry gifts and offices are about preaching and teaching God's word, both rhema and logos. Now, these gifts, these particular gifts come from the person of the Godhead that it's attributed from. The Godhead is very active in the operation of giving gifts. The Lord, you know, have you noticed that the Lord loves to give? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. An angel cannot give you the prophet, the office of a prophet or a seer or a perceiver. A man or woman, as best as their intentions could be, cannot lay hands on you and give you the gift of teacher or of an evangelist. These only come from God. I have to press this for a moment by the Holy Spirit before I get into the spiritual gifts and manifestations, which are nine of them. And this is where we're really going to be delving into the majority of today's class. But before we go here, we I, this really needs to be emphasized because many are looking, and there's probably some of you that are tuning in, that are looking for man to confirm God's call on your life. And you are waiting. You are going through hoops and loops. You are uh, hoping, you are praying to God to find favor in the sight of man, in the sight of maybe your pastor or, uh, you know, your priest or what have you, to give the blessing, quote unquote, of confirming the call of God on your life. The thing is, is that God's call is sure through him. He is the one who calls. He who calls is the one who provides the, the gift and the anointing. Of that gift. Now, am I saying that it's bad for you to receive a confirmation from a man or woman of God? No, of course not. Um, but it, it, it's it's gotten to where um, in these last days, and I have to say this, there are a lot of leaders in the churches that do not want to see their flock or anyone in their flock move up. They don't want to see them be promoted unless they feel threatened that, you know, who's this person from my congregation that thinks God is calling them to pastor a church? And they will go as far as saying, wait, hold on. And you, you be, uh, being not only filled with the Holy Spirit, but truly spending genuine time with the Lord, seeking his face, know that, wait a minute, I'm, I'm not being called to wait. I'm, I'm actually being called to move on this, to, to move forward. And there are some that have quenched the Holy Spirit because they are now waiting on man to confirm God's call versus 
going with the word and the confirmation of God himself. It takes faith, folks. It takes walking by faith and not by sight. You're not going to be accepted in the world's eyes. And again, in these last days, even among the brethren, you know, the Lord Jesus Christ himself said that a prophet is never welcomed in his, in his own hometown. He says, not even among his own household. Yet you're seeking the, the confirmation from your spouse. You're seeking to be confirmed by your children. You're begging God that he would speak through prophet so-and-so or pastor so-and-so to confirm your call. And um, it's, it's, it's out of hand. It, 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 again, it's quenching the Holy Spirit because now you are being delayed. And we really have to discern the spirit that's behind these people that we're seeking confirmation from. Now, some may say, you know, you know, there's some who are tuning in. You may say, well, I don't want to be self-appointed. You know, I don't want to be self, self-acknowledged here. I don't want to confirm it myself. I'm not telling you to do that either. No, listen, none of us are self-appointed. If you're, we're truly called by God, not one, even though man may not have appointed you. To others, the world, the devil, they may say, they may try to mock and scorn. The same thing that the Pharisees and Sadducees said. They, they told Jesus, look, look at you. You're trying to get glory for yourself. And Jesus said, anyone who knows, he said, he said, anyone who hears me, they hear the Father's voice. They know that it's not my own words that I'm speaking because they see God. Where you, you see glory for yourself. This is what Jesus told the Pharisees and Sadducees. You're the ones who appointed yourself to this. He said, but I didn't appoint myself to this. I seek only to glorify God. And the same thing, listen, please hear me because, again, uh, there are ma the, the, many are called, few are chosen, and then the ones that are, you know, the few that are chosen are now kind of stepping back in doubt. Because you really believe that you have to have the A-OK -okay from a, uh, a, 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 a so-called higher up or an elder. Listen, I'm not... This is not going against any elders of the church. Absolutely not. I mean, and please understand this as well. If you are seeking to have a position in your local church, they do. They will have an order. They will have a rule, right? Uh, you know, God is a God of order, and they more than likely have an order on how they uh, ordain, how they call a person, whether male or female, to a position in their church. However. If God is calling you out to start your own church or your own ministry or a missionary out in the field and you're seeking from the local council, the local body uh, of, 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 of the leaders, elders or you know the ministers of your particular church or congregation, they're not going to see what you're seeing. It's very rare and I have to say this, it is extremely rare where you will have the blessing of a leader or elder or a minister or pastor to go out of their church congregation to start on your own. They will cut, a lot of them will say, I don't think God's calling you to that. Are you sure? And they, instead of helping, will actually put more doubt. And it, 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 you have to, we have to be mature about this. We Are we going to trust God or not? That's the question. Now, I have to also say this. If you're seeking to be promoted or to be ordained, uh, or to particular, you know, to work in a particular role in your local church, you have to follow their rules. So if they say, well, you know, uh, you, if you go into their office and you sit before the pastor and you say, Pastor, you know, I really believe the Lord's calling me to uh, be associate pastor. And the pastor may hear you out and you may say, okay, well, that's nice. But until God speaks to me about you being an associate pastor on, on our team, I, uh, you know, I'm going to wait on that. But I'll tell you what, I'll be more than happy to check you out. Um, you know, what what uh, what ministry roles have you uh, volunteered in in our church? What have you uh, done to uh, show forth uh, your, uh, you know, this 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 call of being established in your life? And you have to either be ready to show something because they want to see as the leaders of their church. If you're seeking to work in their church at a particular call or office or you got to get get to work in because not one leader of the church that they're in charge of is just going to give the reins over or a position over to any of you or me or any of us if we're seeking to be part of their church even though God probably said God gave you a specific word and said you are going to be associate pastor in the current church that you're in just because you were called doesn't mean that it's going to happen in that same day there's a work that still needs to be worked remember remember David David was anointed 
David was anointed by the prophet Samuel to be the next king of Israel. But right after he was anointed, he didn't go straight to the throne room and, and, and sit on the on, on, on King Saul's chair and kick them out and say, get out, I'm next in line. <laughs> he didn't do that. He had to still go through a process. He had to mature. Even though the anointing was established, he had to be matured in that office before getting, you know, before taking charge of that office. And so, you know, he, the moment immediately after he got anointed, the Bible says he went back into shepherding. He went back to take care of the sheep. What he was doing was tending the lambs. He got the, the most mundane duty out of all his brothers that were out battling on behalf of King Saul to fight the Philistines. He went back to tend to the herds and the sheep and, you know, to hear the, the sheep and goats and all that. But in that time was the time that he was being trained up. So don't despise the fact that you may be told no if you are seeking a particular position or believe that God has called you, gave you a very specific word. Uh, concerning a particular position in your local church or congregation, but you've got to wait on it and uh, believe that if this is of the Lord, it will be brought forth. But it may not be brought forth in the time that you think it will be. Same thing with Joseph. He, he uh, you know, he, he didn't get promoted uh, until uh, it, it was years. It was a long, it was, I think it was, well, I don't know if it was up to a decade or well over a decade before he got the position he uh, was meant to be in, that he was already anointed and appointed, and it was confirmed in a dream, two dreams to be exact, where Joseph was was to be the second highest in command, not only of all Egypt, but the Bible says in all the world, right under Pharaoh. <laughs> and um, But it didn't happen overnight. Uh, to him, he probably thought, this thing's probably going to happen soon, 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 but it did not, ha he had to go through a process. So it is with each and every one of us. Now, again, I'm, I'm making the specific emphasis for those who are, who believe that you've been called to your local church, your local congregation. You can't force it upon your pastor. They have to, they're going to be, the Lord will speak to them. Your job is to be faithful unto the Lord Jesus Christ. But for others, you've been called outside of your church to actually to, to embark on something completely new on a on a part of the end time harvest field that is untouched or maybe was touched and worked on but it hasn't been worked on in a long time and the Lord's going to call you to a particular part of the end time harvest field as an apostle prophet evangelist pastor teacher and to you you may have to do it from the very beginning and you're not going to get the accolades you're not going to get the Woo! You're not going to get the confirmation and everybody hooping and hollering for you and, you know, presenting you to the whole congregation as the next pastor. You're going to be on your own. You're, you're going to have to do this thing solo as an eagle. You, you're not going to be flocking with the other birds. You're going to have to really trust God when you're not hearing anybody confirming anything. As a matter of fact, you're hearing the complete opposite. You're being told that you are not called into ministry and, and you're being told that you're not supposed to be preaching. You're too young. You're too old. Uh, you're female, you know, or, or you're, you know, you're, you're a husband and, you know, but you've had a bad past, you know, your lifestyle back and before Christ, it won't fit well in, 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 in today's modern church societies. And, you know, it, and, and so you are being told the complete opposite. And again, we have to be seekers of the father's face. We really have to have a mature relationship with the king to, uh, to, to understand uh, that his call, you know, that the call on our lives comes from him and not from man. In the midst of the opposition, in the midst of our own doubts, that we listen to the still small voice within our spirit. God himself speaking to us, saying, no, this is the way to go walk in it. What I've put in you a year ago is still in you now. It's not faded or gone away. Yes, the enemy, the world, your friends, your family has been trying to maybe stifle that voice. He says, but I'm still here and I have not changed my mind. All the gifts of God are irrevocable. All the gifts and callings of God are irrevocable, meaning it cannot be taken back. When he has established it, when he has set it forward, when he's written it, it will not, he will not erase it. It's, it's yours. Now, our position is to walk in him. Stay with him. Stay the course. Again, seek the Lord's face. Stay so, so close to the shepherd. Not leaning on our own understanding. We have to acknowledge God with every part of our being. Especially when everybody is not seeing what we see. And we're like, oh my gosh, am I even called? This, I hope you all are hearing me because these are the types of situations that many are finding themselves in in these last days. 
And I also want to add, for those that may be being, being called out of the local congregation or churches to start your own church or to go onto the mission field or to start your own ministry or what have you, um, you still have to go through a process as well of being matured. Each and every one of us do. So whether you have to wait to enter the calling that you know God has given you for the local church, let's say as an associate pastor or as a teacher in the Bible college or what have you, the same goes as if... You know, the same, the same exact process goes whether you are in the local church, you've been called in there, you know, you know whether you've been called to, 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 to you know, to a, a certain level in the local church or whether you've been called outside of the local church to start your own ministry. It's still going to be a process. It's still going to require faith and diligence and uh, time to be matured because when we're talking about gifts offices callings that's a battlefield it's not all glitz and glam i know you got you know preachers of la preachers of georgia or houston or whatever these goofy shows are coming out giving the illusion that's all glitz and glam you know everybody's got their sports car everybody's got their 10 million dollar mansion everybody's got their gucci purses and pretty hairs and everybody's got the congregation like woo, and they're like on fire everybody's a rapper and a singer and preacher and a teacher it's like wow this is cool i want to be a minister you better know what you're about to get into that all oh, that's alive what you saw on those shows all of it is a downright dirty lie they won't show you behind the scenes now i know they try to do behind the scenes on these goofy shows you know, the pastor's having an issue, he's about to break down, pastor and the wife is fighting. That's, 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 that's Hollywood. It gets real. <laughs> Woo! You don't want to know how real it gets unless you're ready to face the heat. Because hell is hot when you're pulling souls out of it. Real hot. All right, let's get into spiritual gifts and manifestations. If you're with me, if you're receiving today's class, will you say amen? By faith, I got to believe you're saying amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> You know, I'm so excited because we're working on uh, getting our, our church building, getting an official church building where we'll be able to have an actual audience or actual students, actual members of our congregation. Uh, so we'll, we'll continue to do the online as the Lord leads us while being in an actual building. And I want you to visit our webpage and you know what? Support us. Help us reach our goal. We have a, a goal to meet of $100,000. And, uh, you know, I'm not asking you to meet the whole hundred thousand unless you're able to, of course. But even if, you know, a gift of ten dollars, uh, you know, a donation of twenty five dollars, maybe some of you could do even a little bit more. That's going to help us reach our goal even quicker. Uh, just go visit our website right now and take a moment and give. Take a moment to help us reach our goal. Go on to www.emoaf.org, E-M-O-A-F dot O-R-G emoaf.org. Now, the moment you get on there on the front homepage, you're going to see the, uh, the, the link on where to go for a church building. Check it out and sow a seed. Help us reach our goal today in Jesus' name. Amen. Spiritual gifts and manifestations. All right. Let's get down to the nitty gritty. Spiritual gifts and manifestations from the Holy Spirit. Now, these are going to be divided into three uh, categories. The first category, and I'm just going to go ahead and start writing it down. The first category is going to be under what's called revelation gifts. Write down revelation gifts. The second category will be under the category of what's called power gifts. Write down power gifts. And the third category will be under what's called, and I want to make sure I have room here that you all can see. I think you can. Utterance gifts. Write down utterance gifts. So you have revelation gifts, power gifts, utterance gifts. Each category will have three gifts each. All of these gifts are from God, the Holy Spirit. 
let's go right into what these gifts are. And I think I'm going to switch my color up here. Number one, for revelation gifts, the first gift of revelation. Actually, you know what? Hold on. I definitely don't want to skip any steps here. Let's read the scriptural reference where we can find the spiritual gifts and manifestations from God the Holy Spirit. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8. And be sure to write down the scriptural reference as well. Right next to this spiritual gifts and manifestations of the Holy Spirit. Rev, uh, uh, excuse me, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8 through 10. Alright, let's read. For to one is given the word of wisdom. Stop. Let's read this in context. Let's start with verse 4, and I apologize for that. Erase number 8 and put verse 4. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8, uh, verse 4 through 10. I'm going to excuse myself again. Instead of four... Instead of verse 4 through 10, put verse 4 through 11. Again, let's read this in context. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4 through 11 reads. Are you there? If you are, please read along. There are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healings by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles. To another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues, but one and the same spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. All right. Let's write down the list. The first three, Revelation gifts. Number one, the word of wisdom. Number two, the word of knowledge. Number three, discerning. Of spirits. Give you a moment to write that down. Each one of these gifts are given for the profit of all. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4 through 11, it includes the revelation gifts, the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, discerning of spirits. What is the word or a word of wisdom? What is a word or the word of wisdom? First and foremost, understand that revelation simply means making known of information. 
revelation simply means making known of information. Write that down. So when you receive a word of wisdom or when you give a word of wisdom, and I put the word of wisdom for a reason. You can put the, you can put a, that's fine. When you receive a word of wisdom, a word of wisdom is a word, a proclamation or a declaration that is supernaturally given by God. Its purpose is to meet the need of a particular future, present, either a particular present or future occasion or problem. A word of wisdom can be given through a believer via words like rhema words, through visions, through dreams. It provides understanding and instruction on what action must be taken. That is the word or a word of wisdom. It is not revealed. Please hear me, okay? Because this, this will be too much to write down. So just hear this, this portion. Write down whatever you feel needs to be written down. That's fine. Um, the word of wisdom is not by natural or human ability. It is God's revelation, supernaturally, of his plans and wisdom for a particular person or situation. It is not psychic readings. People have sought to twist or to steal the gifts of the Spirit and use it for their gain. In, uh, you know, doing uh, so-called psychic readings and they dub it under prophetic readings and they seek to bring forth a word of wisdom. This should not be. God forbid that that continues to the one who is doing it. Because they will be held highly accountable for taking advantage of the gifts of God in such a, a vain and, and, and ungodly way. The word of wisdom or a word of wisdom is God's revelation of his plans and purposes, again, for a particular person or a situation in an instant. Number two. You know, I'm really... I don't mean to mess anybody up, especially if you're writing with pen. I'm going to simply just replace the with a. A word of wisdom a word of knowledge. Number two, a word of knowledge. A word of knowledge. What is the word or a word of knowledge when it comes to the operation of the gifts of the Holy Spirit? The word or a word of knowledge communicates past or present facts or events that cannot be known through our natural senses. Now, some people have such a gift of remembering scriptures. They have a knowledge of God and his ways. This is supernatural when you have knowledge of God and his ways. This is not human ability. Now, of course, many of us read the scriptures, many of us study the scriptures, but when it starts to... When, when, when the word of knowledge is in operation is when it starts to flow. Scripture starts to flow concerning a person's situation, concerning what the Lord is, is seeking to speak to uh, an individual, a group of people, a church, a body, you know, a particular body in a congregation, or over a situation. It's all supernatural from the Holy Spirit. They seem to be able to quickly distinguish which is biblical and which is not. This is a word of knowledge. Some translations say it is the word of knowledge, while others say that it is the utterance utterance of knowledge could indicate that those with the gift to speak with and what words to speak with. So for instance, both words seem to fulfill what true knowledge is. These with this gift make excellent teachers, elders, or pastors when we're talking about a word of knowledge. Now I want to also add uh, when it comes to the word or a word of wisdom. 
The gift of the word of wisdom enables one to express the Holy Spirit's revelation, knowledge, and answers to either an individual or to a group of people or a church, etc. In a way that surpasses any previous natural ability to input into the situation. It carries the wisdom of God. Talking about the word or a word of wisdom. And God's wisdom beats all other wisdom known to man. Wisdom. When we're talking about wisdom, wisdom is simply applying knowledge with skill. Did you hear me? Wisdom, when we're talking about wisdom, is simply applying knowledge with skill. For instance, the word of wisdom is needed in our lives to enable us to share the other gifts of the Spirit correctly. So, it is one thing to receive a word of prophecy, right? Or a word of knowledge, uh, a word of you know, uh, you know, it, it, you know, if you're receiving, f uh, you know, faith or, or or healing regarding a situation or a person, it's entirely another thing to deliver that gift in such a way as to allow it to have its fullest impact. Many people do receive information and gifts in the Holy Spirit, but do not always know how to deliver nor to whom to deliver it to. If we do not minister in God's wisdom, this is where wisdom comes in, a word of wisdom, we can make mistakes, we can cause disrespects to the gifts of the Holy Spirit, and show, ins and show insensitivity to the person or people we are delivering the information to, and even cause offense. So the gift of wisdom or I should say this, if you have another gift, such as you know discerning of spirits or the gift of knowledge, or when we get into the power gifts, you may have the gift right, but the manner of dispensing it may be wrong. Now, this is where the word of wisdom helps us to make sure that we deliver all the other gifts right. This is why it's first. You cannot get into the word of knowledge or discerning of spirits or into the gifts of healings and the gifts of miracles and the and tongues and, and the interpretation of tongues and, and your prophecy until wisdom is operating. And each and every one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the word of wisdom will always be attached to each one. Are you understanding me? Again, you may have the gifts of others, of, of, of the other, um, you know, uh, you may have the gift of tongues or the interpretation of tongues, for instance, that we're going to get into here, okay? But the word of wisdom is what's needed to be attached to that. And when you have wisdom, the word of wisdom, the gift of the word of wisdom in operation by the Holy Spirit, in conjunction with, the, with another gift, it will help deliver it perfectly. It will help deliver it right. The right application of knowledge. If you're understanding what was just said, please say amen. You may have all the food. You may have all the food available to feed a whole slew of homeless, hungry men, women, and children. But unless you have plates to deliver the food on, you are going to deliver it in your hands and you will make a mess. Nobody's going to want to eat it from your hands. They want to know, did, is your hands clean? <laughs> you know, are, is it even washed? What do you, why are you giving me food from your hands? The wisdom is the carrier. The gift of wisdom is what brings forth the delivery of each and every one of the other gifts. does not matter what it is. We're going to get into the other gifts. You can see it. It, it, all, all in conjunction with one another, all in light, all in context is what I mean. All right, let's continue. <clears throat> Pardon me. Power gifts. Oh, I, the, 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 the discerning of spirits, please forgive me. <laughs> We're gonna, number three, discerning of spirits. Discerning of spirits. Now this is a supernatural recognition of the presence or activity of spiritual forces, whether godly or ungodly, whether clean or unclean. Many say, oh, I have discernment. All right, well, you may have discernment. Others claim that they have a discerning of spirits, but they have wrongly 
wrongly to to the to to the detriment of someone else have stated or have perceived another spirit in a person that was not even there for instance if someone is seeking to uh, show off what they believe they have as the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit they can really hurt somebody in the discerning of spirits realm if they're not truly operating in this particular gift because they can tell someone if someone comes up to a Christian who claims to have this gift uh, and, and, and the person says, you know, I've been struggling with um, all sorts of crazy thoughts in my head, you know, uh, and they go on to explain what kind of thoughts these are. You know, these are just horrific thoughts. These are blasphemous at times. At times they're lustful. It's just all sorts of things. I don't know what's going on with me. I don't know what's, if I'm going crazy. What is it? I, I just got saved a few months ago and everything was fine at first. Now all of a sudden I'm, Feel like I'm going crazy. I don't know where these thoughts came from. It seems so erratic and so compulsive. If the person is operating out of their flesh, calling it the discerning of spirits, they will tell that man that he's demon possessed. They will tell tell that new Christian, you you are you're a demon possessed man. You need to I need to I need to cast a demon out of you. And they will I'll go on a whole trail off of God's wisdom, off off of the spiritual gifts. Because the discerning of spirits will be an operation to be able to discern what that man is going through. And I use that for an example with someone going through, you know, some crazy stuff in their head. And that happens a lot, though. And uh, they've been told, oh, well, you need to go see a doctor. Maybe you're depressed. You need to go take some pills. Go on a vacation or you're demon possessed. And there's no true discerning of spirits. Because if there was, they would be able to properly, by the wisdom of God, which is another gift, Speak forth the truth over that man's life. And if there is a demon, it will be cast out with another power gift that we will be establishing here in a moment. Uh, if it is truth, that needs to be brought forth. Faith, if it needs to be, whatever it is, it will be discerned properly. Let me give you an example. I want to give you specific scripture for this. Acts, go with me to the book of Acts chapter 16. The book of Acts, chapter 16, verse 16. The book of Acts, chapter 16, verse 16. And we're going to read from verse 16 through 18. Let's read. Now it happened as we went to prayer, this is Paul speaking, that a certain slave girl possessed with a spirit of divination met us who brought her masters much profit by fortune telling. This girl followed Paul and us. Now, please forgive me. I said this was Paul speaking. It's not Paul. Uh, it says, this girl, excuse me, it's about Paul. This girl followed Paul and us and cried out, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, who proclaim to us the way of salvation. And this she did for many days. But Paul, greatly annoyed, turned and said to the Spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out that very hour. The Apostle Paul discerned that she had an ungodly, unclean spirit operating in her, even though this young girl was proclaiming fact. She was proclaiming truth. She stated that these men are the servants of the Most High God, who proclaim to us the way of salvation. But it came from a wrong spirit, and that spirit was discerned by the Apostle Paul that needed to be cast out. Are we getting this? The Apostle Paul had the manifestation of the gift of discerning of spirits at that very moment to be able to cast that thing out. Now, I want you to understand that this was not something that happened the first day. Because the Bible says in verse 17, these men are, you know, when she, when she said that these men are the, the servants of God, most high. Okay, in verse 18, 
Please read it with me. Read it to see it for yourself. And this she did for many days. She followed the Apostle Paul and Silas for many days. Proclaiming a truth. For, you know, for some ministers and preachers in these last days, they'd love to have their, uh, you know, this uh, young girl or guy or what have you proclaim, listen to them. These are the servants of the Most High God. They're here to proclaim to us the way of salvation. Because they, won't, they, they, they would love that because they wouldn't be able to discern the Spirit. Because they're, a lot of them are not walking in the Spirit as it is. But because Paul was. He was able to discern the Spirit because the gift of the Holy Spirit, the discerning of spirits, came into manifestation. The Holy Spirit got annoyed. The Holy Spirit knew that there was an unclean spirit in that young girl and brought forth the manifestation of this revelation to the Apostle Paul and brought forth the utterance to speak against that spirit and to command it to leave in the name of Jesus. These are the gifts. That is given to each and every one of us as the Holy Spirit wills. As the Holy Spirit wills. <clears throat> Discerning of spirits. Again, this is supernatural recognition of the presence or activity of spiritual forces, either clean or unclean, godly or ungodly. Now, let's continue to our power gifts. Power gifts. Number one. The first power gift, gifts of healings. Write that down. Gifts of healings. The second power gift, working of miracles. Write that down. Number two, working of of miracles. The third power gift is faith. And I want you to put in parentheses supernatural faith. Supernatural faith. Now the gifts of healings, these gifts, plural, right, are more than the believer's normal activity of praying for the sick or visiting a doctor. These are very special, significant gifts and manifestations, talking about the gifts of healings, given to Christians by which they have consistently positive results. These gifts are always supernatural. They do the impossible, the gifts of healings. What they accomplish are literally miracle events. They may be done with prayer, the gifts of healings, but they can also include more than prayer or can be via a command or a touch. As the Apostle Paul did in the book of Acts, people can recognize and use even objects to bring forth God's healing, such as a piece of cloth. Now again, there, there, there are many in these last days that have sought to take the gifts of God and use it for their own gain and for their own glory. And because of this, there are many that have despised the idea of a healing cloth or a, a, a word of, of, uh, of or, 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 or the gifts of healings via prayer, via command, via touch. Let me give you an example. There, you, 
you know, I'm an evangelist. And uh, we, we, we hold conferences. So let's say we, we had a conference or in, in our new church building, you, you come up to, uh, you know, myself and pastor and you say, you know, I, I, I'm asking for prayer. I'm asking uh, that, you know, uh, that, well, you know, I have this, this area in my body that's not functioning well and I've been really suffering with it. I've been to several doctors. And as you're telling us this and I'm hearing you, all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit manifests the gifts of healings. And I bring, a, I, you suddenly, I command that spirit of infirmity to leave your body in the name of Jesus. And there is a command that brings forth a healing. That is what the gifts of healings would look like. That's an example. It only comes from the Holy Spirit. This is not the same, again, I have to repeat what I already said. This is not the same as normal activity for praying for the sick. When, again, we have, you know, there's prayer lines. Many of you go to the prayer lines in your church and you ask for healing. You have the pastors lay hands on you and they speak a word over you. That is not the gifts of healings. That is simply having the elders be called on and they're praying uh, over you. They're laying hands over you and, 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 and asking you know, they're, 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 they're praying the prayer of faith. They're, they're asking the Lord to bring forth healing and deliverance. That is not the gift of healings. I mean, that's blessed. It, it, it's biblical. We do that. We're going to continue to do that in the name of Jesus. But gifts of healings is very specific. Please go with me to the book of Mark. Or, uh, excuse me, to the Gospel of Mark. To show you scripture on this. The Gospel of Mark, chapter 16. The Gospel of Mark, chapter 16, verse 18. I want us to read this together so that you can get further understanding as to the gifts of healings, what it will look like. The Gospel of Mark, chapter 16, verse 18 reads, They will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. And then hear this. Hear this. It says here, They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. That is gifts of healing. This is a power gift that is administered by the Holy Spirit. When you know it is a power gift is that there will be recovery from that sickness or from that disease or that infirmity. When someone lays hands on you that's, that's manifesting this gift, when someone speaks a command over you in that area of infirmity or sickness or whatever. And, it, it does, and, and please understand this as well. This, this doesn't just go for healing of the body. It could include healing of the mind, healing of the soul, healing in your marriage. The gifts of healings is relevant and available to every area of a believer's life. So it's not just limited to physical healing. But, you know, it seems like, well, if that's all it was, it'll be fine, right? And we praise the Lord that it is included. But there is so much more that the Lord desires to heal, that he desires to manifest his gift in. That's why it's called gifts of healings. It's multiple, multi-layered. And I'm, I'm glad. He, he, he loves to give gifts. Are you interested in receiving his gifts? Are you preparing yourself to receive gifts? You know, that's why Jesus said, you have to have childlike faith. He told us this, right? If your faith is as, he said, your faith must be like the faith of a child. It, 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 be, be like a, a child. And how, how is a child when they're about to receive a gift? I have six children. Many of you have children tuning in. You know that Christmas is coming up or birthdays are coming up. Uh, you know, for some you celebrate, you know, other holidays and it and, and brings forth gifts and they're anticipating it. They are expecting to receive a gift, a good gift from you because they know that you have been faithful into giving them gifts and they, they're they always pleased with the gifts that you give them as being their parents. And for many of us, we have forgotten how it, it is to receive a gift. We don't have the childlike faith that God has, you know, that he, he really demands us to have in these last days. 
And so when you, you know, you, you, you think of gifts of healings, you say, well, you know, I don't know. Yeah, I, I hear that there's healings available, but I don't know if it'll be for this situation in my life. He says, yes, it is. Anticipate it. Have faith. If your faith is as tiny as a mustard seed, you'll say to this mountain, lift yourself up out of your roots and be planted over there on the midst of the sea, and it'll, it'll obey you. Expect. Have hope. Hope is not... Well, I hope so. Hope is expectancy. It's childlike faith. That's what hope is. This is for each and every one of us because there are so many gifts that have not been opened. It's because we have forgotten what it is to have childlike faith. Don't forget. Ask the Lord to renew it for you today in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so gifts of healings. Oh, uh, okay. Let's go on now to working of miracles. Working of miracles. The word miracles, we, we've discussed it in previous classes in the Greek, means dunamis. It means the working of God's power. Say the working of God's power. Talking about working of miracles. Working of God's power. That's what this literally means. Working of miracles means working of dunamis, working of God's power. And it's a power that interrupts, it displaces, it disregards all natural laws and nature, or all natural laws of nature that would try to get in the way of having a miracle be wrought. I love it. It is God's power working through a believer in Christ. And the Lord himself uses a man, a woman, a child of God who, 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 who is of him. I'm not talking about the world. This is, these gifts are not for the world, folks. These gifts are for children of God. And the Lord uses the manifestation, the gift of the working of miracles to show himself through the person he uses it. And he interrupts or disrupts all things that are necessary his own design, his own order of things to bring about his perfect will, to bring about his own will. That's what the working of miracles is under the, uh, under the spiritual gifts and manifestations of the Holy Spirit. And I want you to see this according to the scriptures. So please go with me to the book of Acts, chapter 5. The book of Acts, chapter 5, we're going to read in verse 12, and we'll read from verse 12 through verse 16. We'll read from 12 through verse 16, concerning the working of miracles. The book of Acts, chapter 5, verse 12 through 16 reads, And through the hands of the apostles, many signs and wonders were done among the people. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. Yet none of the rest dared join them, but the people esteemed them highly. And believers were increasingly added to the Lord, multitudes of both men and women, so that they brought the sick out into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at least the shadow of Peter passing by might fall on some of them. Also a multitude gathered from the surrounding cities to Jerusalem, bringing sick people and those who were tormented by unclean spirits, and they were all healed. So we saw miracles, the performance of miracles. You know, we, uh, we did a class uh, just a few short weeks ago on the miracles of Jesus Christ, the miracles of God the Father, the miracles of the Holy Spirit. We're talking about uh, the, 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 the Red Sea being parted. That's a miracle of God. We, 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 we you know, looked into the, the, you know, Jesus turning the water into wine. That's a miracle of God. We talked about the regeneration of, of man when they are born again by the Holy Spirit. That is a miracle of God. But when it comes to to the working of miracles according to spiritual gifts and manifestations, there will be miracles that are wrought in the eyes of all who see. It will be evident. There will not be any glory given to any doctor, to any man, woman, or child, to anything but God himself. Because it is truly a miracle. 
And there are many reports of miracles that are still very much happening in these last days. For somebody tuning in, you are a miracle to the Lord God. The miracle, the, the working of miracles. We're going to see more of this in, our last day, in these last days, my friends. We're going to see more miracles, signs, and wonders. But please understand that it does not come from man. It comes from God. It is not whenever you want to. You cannot say, I'm just going to hold a miracle crusade. I'm going to hold a miracle conference so I can perform your miracles, oh God. And you put out the banners, you put out the advertisement, you have people coming in and you say, oh, I'm here to perform miracles on behalf of God. No, unless God is, is ready by his own will. To bring forth miracle signs and wonders, you are you're not going to do anything, and you may start faking it, and that would be a that would just be a horrible thing. So you 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 have to submit yourself to the Lord God and tell Him to use you in these spiritual gifts and manifestations. Let's continue. Let's go to utterance gifts. Utterance gifts. The word utterance, oral, verbal, from the mouth. Utterance gifts. Number one, the first utterance, the first utterance gift, number one, prophecy. Write down prophecy. The second utterance gift, different kinds of tongues. Write down different kinds of tongues. The third utterance gift is the interpretation of tongues. All right. Praise the Lord. Now I'll tell you, looking at all these gifts that we just looked at, I mean, some are saying, man, you know, I'd love to have, you know, I, I could have me some wisdom. I'll take some knowledge. Give me some gifts of healings. Oh, you know what? I got to get into faith. We're going to get into faith right now. Please forgive me. I have not forgotten faith. Goodness gracious. Oh, is it the same thing with discerning of spirits? But we're getting into that right now. Some will think that they can pick and choose whatever gift, whatever gift that they so desire. What we have to remember is that the Lord says that the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. That's the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit Himself, that brings forth the gifts. For some of you, you're saying, why? Well, I mean, you know, there are now maybe some of you. Well, maybe there is. Heck, I don't, you know, it could be someone who's tuning in. Saying, you know, I would love to, I don't mind having some of these gifts, but I don't know about the discerning of spirits. Because the discerning of spirits could also and will include discerning demonic activity or presence of a demon. It will include discerning of evil spirits. You, where you will see things, not all the time, but in, in a particular instance or for a particular purpose into the supernatural for the sake of deliverance of a person and for, for some that could be a scary thing but no it's by the Holy Spirit there's grace and anointing for all of this friends uh, but before we go into the utterance gifts we got to get into faith power gift faith supernatural faith number three under power gifts faith supernatural faith listen friends this faith the gift of faith according to the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. This is not a normal faith. And what I mean by that is that it is not the faith that we have as Christians, as believers. And I don't... I'm not even trying to dumb down that faith. Please forgive me, Lord. That faith is a holy faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Um, faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So when I say normal, I'm going to actually get that word out of there. Forget I even said normal. 
but this particular faith, this gift of faith is not the same faith that we have as believers uh, who walk by faith and not by sight. This particular faith is a supernatural faith that God himself gives, which you receive as a gift and manifestation of the Holy Spirit uh, for special needs and opportunities for somebody, for a particular situation. For instance, it sustains those that receive it in times of persecution or hardship or imminent danger. And I want to give you scripture for this. Go with me to the book of Acts, chapter 7. I think we should still be in the book of Acts. The book of Acts, chapter 7. Stephen, the martyr, the first martyr of the church, had the gift of faith, supernatural faith in operation when he was about to be martyred. <clears throat> and during, excuse me, during the time of his actual martyrdom. Stephen, we can read that in the book of Acts chapter 7. The book of Acts chapter 7 verse 54. <clears throat> Pardon me. The book of Acts chapter 7 verse 54 reads, When they heard these things, when they heard these things, they were cut to the heart and they gnashed at him with their teeth. But he, talking about Stephen, being full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God and said, Look, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice, stopped their ears, and ran at him with one accord. And they cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at the feet of a young man named Saul. And they stoned Stephen as he was calling on God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not charge them with this sin. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. This is the gift of supernatural faith in operation. That Stephen was able to be, to arise, to not run away from being stoned. To see Jesus in all his glory prior to him going before the Lord. He was able to to preach to his soon-to-be murderers before he was martyred because of the gift of faith, supernatural faith in operation. Now, this faith, this gift of faith also gives to those who operate in extreme levels of power. Through these people, God, God does signs and wonders and unusual amazing events. So it is no wonder that the power gifts is in a category in and of itself. Each and every one of these are in categories for a reason. You cannot have the gifts of healings without supernatural faith. You cannot have the working of miracles without supernatural faith. It's the same token of the word of wisdom. You cannot give forth a word of knowledge. You cannot discern spirits unless a word of wisdom is accompanying that. Faith, supernatural faith, is an awesome gift when it is in operation with the gifts of healings and working of miracles because while the whole congregation could be in doubt, while the person that you're ministering this word to or this gifts of healing to is in doubt, Faith will propel everybody's level to that faith that God has bestowed upon you through his gift via the Holy Spirit. You know, the Bible says that I have not given you a spirit of fear. Jesus says this. God, God the Father says this. The Lord, uh, you have the Apostle Paul who tells young Timothy for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. A spirit of fear can be contagious. 
If one fears and if they walk around in fear, they could have their whole household in fear before they know it. They could have a whole congregation in fear. Well, faith is the same way. If you walk in faith, it's contagious. You'll have others in your household walking in faith. At first they may doubt, at first they'll, they'll, they'll resist, but they're hearing you, and before they know it, they'll be walking in that faith too. When it comes to supernatural faith, beloved, that's where you get miracles and, and gifts of healings. That's where you get miracle signs and wonders. And it only comes from God. It's, listen, all of this are abilities from God and God alone. Are you hearing me? If you are, say amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right, now let's go on to the utterance gifts. The utterance gifts. And those are three gifts. The first gift, prophecy. Prophecy. Now I want you to go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 22. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 22. And I want us to read this portion of scripture together. Let me just get a sip of water here. First Corinthians chapter 14. Thank you, Lord. All praise and glory be to you in Jesus' name. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 22. Let's read. Therefore, tongues are for a sign, not to those who believe, but to unbelievers, but prophesying. This is a portion of scripture I want us to read for this. Number one, prophecy under, under utterance gifts. But prophesying is not for unbelievers, but for those who believe. Prophesying is not for unbelievers, but for those who believe. I also want you to read in chapter 14, and let's just simply read verse 3 through 5. We're in the same chapter, just simply go a few verses back and let's read verse 3 through 5. But he who prophesies speaks edification and exhortation and comfort to men. He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church. I wish you all spoke with tongues, but even more that you prophesied. For he who prophesies is greater than he who speaks with tongues, unless indeed he interprets that the church may receive edification. Prophecy. When we're looking at the gift of prophecy, where it, it includes two very distinct, separate yet important functions. And I just I want you to write this down. It includes foretell, foretell, and forth tell. Foretell and forth tell. Say it with me, please. Foretell and forth tell. Foretelling, we're talking about foretelling prophecy, uttering prophecy by the gift of the Holy Spirit. We're talking about things to come. To foretell talks about things to come. This is where you have so-called enemies of the cross of the worldly seeking to become fortune tellers, right? They, 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 they seek to claim the gift of prophecy for themselves, for, for their own monetary gain, or just vain gain, and, and they, they, they believe that they're foretelling. But when we're talking about the gift of the Holy Spirit, when we're talking about the manifestation of the utterance gift of prophecy, it could come two ways. Again, number one, to foretell. Prophetic foretelling means to speak of things to come. These are very prophetic Rhema words. Rhema means words from the Lord God Most High 
that must confirm, excuse me, that must be confirmed with Scripture. And it will always be confirmed with Scripture. To forth tell, to forth tell prophetically under the utterance gift means to speak correction and instruction in the present time. Now the Old Testament prophets who were God's covenant enforcers, I love that, spoke more forthtelling than foretelling. The gift of prophecy does continue in today's churches. Now I know there are many who say that it doesn't, but it does. For God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God still speaks to his church today. And he speaks to the church through the gift of prophecy. God speaks both foretelling prophecy and forthtelling prophecy, especially in these last days. He is still correcting. He is instructing. He is speaking on things to come and more. Now hear me. The spiritual gifts and manifestations of prophecy does not make you a prophet. I will repeat that again. The spiritual gift and manifestation of prophecy does not make you a prophet. It just simply is what was allowed, what the Holy Spirit used you for. And that's good. We want to be used by the Holy Spirit. We want to continue to be used by the Holy Spirit. But this does not make you a prophet. This is a gift that will always be used in a time of need to the churches, to an unbeliever, to any whom the Lord needs to speak to concerning a thing that is to come concerning a correction, all for the glory of God, all for the sake of salvation, all for the sake of Filling their lamps or not perishing. The gift of prophecy was never meant to use to be uh, as a showboat for you, for any of us to increase our ministry because we have we, we, we have the utterance of the gift of prophecy. And I have to say this. I have to say this. How do I say this, Lord? Just because these gifts or operated through us at any given time at the will of the Holy Spirit does not mean that we have the right to say that, oh, I have the gift of wisdom. Oh, I have the gift of healings. Oh, I have the gift of prophecy. As if we can operate this at our own will. Because that has been the mistake for many believers in the body of Christ. And that's error. These are not our gifts, my friends. These are gifts that are given through us, to us, in us, and through us for the edification of the body of Christ. We, we read it in the beginning of today's class, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4 through 11. There are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. This is a manifestation of the Spirit. All of these gifts are of the Holy Spirit. This is His gifts, His doing, His will. The glory goes to God. It is not for us to start a ministry of wisdom. It is not for us to start a ministry of knowledge. This is insane. Now, these, these are gifts that allows us to operate in the call of in the, in the ministry offices that God has allowed us to operate in, for those of us who are apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, or, 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 or those of us that have, have received a call, and I got gifts here, please, please, please put the word call here when it came to motivational gifts from God the Father. When we received the call of a prophet, perceiver, ministry server, teacher, exhorter, mercy, ruler, giver, okay? These are the gifts that are required, that are needed at God's will.
Let's go to the gift of tongues. Different kinds of tongues. This is one of the most prominent utterance gifts, if not the most prominent utterance gift. It is a supernatural sign, the different kinds of tongues. It is a supernatural sign by supernatural utterance of the Holy Spirit through the tongue of a believer, the actual tongue of a believer in Christ. It is evidence. It is um, it is evidence that the Holy Spirit is about to bring forth a message that can be understood by all, because the different kinds of tongues are always done in what's called an unknown tongue. We're going to read that here. Go with me to 1 Corinthians. We're still here in chapter 14. Let's visit verse 6 and read from verse 6 through verse 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 6 through verse 13. But now, brethren, if I come to you speaking with tongues, what shall I profit you unless I speak to you either by revelation, by knowledge, by prophesying, or by teaching. Now stop. I'm being pressed right now, big time, to, to, to explain something here. And I got to write it down so you can see it for yourself. So let me make a line here. The gift of tongues. Please write this down. The gift of tongues in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4 through 11, which is the utterance gift right here, the different kinds of tongues. The gift of tongues is not is not the same fire for your head according to Acts chapter 2. Please keep your spot in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and go with me to the book of Acts chapter 2. The book of Acts chapter 2. We're going to read starting in verse 1, when the day of Pentecost had fully come. They were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as a fire, and one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. This is a tongues of fire. What, what, what is your spiritual language for, for you to build yourself up in? This is not the utterance gifts that are at will by the Holy Spirit. This is a gift, evidence of receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So I, I, this has to be differentiated because there are many who have been cheated into believing that if they don't speak in tongues, it's because God has not, you know, the Holy Spirit has not allowed them to do that. The thing is, is that this is not the same. Again, the different kinds of tongues in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4, verse 4 through 11 is not the same gift, the evidence of the spiritual language of tongues in, in the book of Acts chapter 2 where we just read in chapter 2 verse 3 and 4. This Acts chapter 2 also, listen, also um, is confirmed in the book of Jude. Go with me to the book of Jude. The book of Jude is the last book in the Bible, it's really just a letter, a few verses, there's no chapters. The book of Jude, verse 20. I want you to read this, so please, please, please get there. The book of Jude, verse 20. It reads, but you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, 
praying in the Holy Spirit. Jude verse 20 is the same prayer language, the gift that is recorded and talked about in Acts chapter 2. It is not the same as a gift of tongues that is manifested through the Holy Spirit. And I will give you further evidence of this. The gift of your prayer language is to edify yourself, to build yourself up in your most holy faith. You know, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God and faith also in the spirit. Not in front of a church as it is being manifested from the Holy Spirit to not. Jude, verse 20, stand up and is ready to be interpreted. Unless it is ready to be interpreted. It says not they're going to be the same tongues. Please hear me. Different kinds of tongues is the key word here in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4 through 11, when we're talking about the utterance gifts, is different kinds of tongues. It is not the prayer language. It is not the fire for your head that was poured out in the book of Acts chapter 2 and is confirmed in Jude verse 20. Completely different. Please, again, I say hear me. Because many are saying, I don't have to speak in tongues. The thing is, that how could you build your faith if you don't have your personal prayer language that God the Father has given to you by the Holy Spirit? You've had your own day of Pentecost. How can you build up your faith if you're not praying in the Spirit? I don't understand this. This is why many are slack in their walk. Many are not, um, they, they have no energy for the things of God. They, they feel lazy in the Spirit. You know, they got to go pray. They got to go meet with the Lord. They got to you know, um, study the Bible, but they have no energy. They have energy for everything else. You know, let me get this duty out the way and then I'm, I'm free to go now be energized. And that, that, that is a, a clear indication that you have not had your Pentecost yet, your own day of Pentecost. It has nothing to do with the spiritual gifts and manifestations of the different kinds of tongues. I will blow your mind here again. The different kinds of tongues, that could be manifested in a person who's not yet received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That could, that's just for the instance, for that moment. Someone stands up in the church, in the local congregation. They start speaking a very specific tongue. And it sounds probably real, real different. Because you know it doesn't sound like how you would pray in the Spirit. It sounds some, like, like what, is, what is this? What, where, what is this tongue? Next thing you know, if it's of God, it will always be an interpretation of the tongues. Always. Again, I say, I am pressing this by the Holy Spirit. This is not the same as the tongues of fire that has been given to each and every one of us that have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, my advice to you is this, because I'm perceiving that someone is tuning in and you're saying, okay, so then how can I receive my prayer language so that my faith can be built up? Beg God for it. Oh, because I've asked God and God hasn't given it to me. You better beg him. How can you just ask him, walk away, and um, what do you do? I know, listen, folks, please, can, I, can we talk? Can we be, can, can we talk for a moment? There's a lot of precious believers. Well, I've asked God. I've asked God to give me my prayer language, and he, he's just refused. He's flat out refused. And I've been waiting. I've been waiting and waiting and waiting. I've been waiting four years. Now listen, you, that, it, it could be for a couple of reasons. It could be that you're in doubt. And what I mean by that is that you don't really believe, um, you know, you uh, need to speak in tongues. You just want to do it just to test God. And he's not down with your test. He tests you. It's not the other way around. So you will never receive it that way. For others, you have not received the spiritual gift. Not this. Not the different kinds of tongues. That's from the Holy Spirit at his will. This is what's needed for your walk, for your faith right here. The, the, the fire for your head, according to the book of Acts chapter 2 and Jude verse 20. Okay? You have not received this very important spiritual language for you to be built up in your most holy faith. Your day of Pentecost. Because you, you're not even sure if it's from God. How can God give it to you if you're not even sure from Him? 
You, you, you've asked the Lord, Lord, I want to speak in tongues, but he knows our hearts. He knows in your heart. For some of you, he knows in your heart. You do not, you're not even sure if it's from him. You're afraid that if you get it, you, you, you know, you may be accused of being, uh, you know, infiltrated with the evil one, you know, being, being, uh, you know, having the enemy in you rather than the Holy Spirit. You, you, so you're not even sure, but you're thinking that, well, God will make me sure when he gives me the gift. That's not the way it works. You, if you really want the gift of the, of the, if you really want to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but particularly the evidence of that, which is speaking in other tongues, you, you got to beg him. I'm telling you, as sure as you're tuning in, you got to beg the Lord for this. He's not just going to give it out to you unless you want this gift. You got to want it. It's one thing to want it. It's another thing to run after it. There are some of you that, you know, if, if you had to catch a bus, you needed to catch a plane, and you see the time and you woke up late and you're like, oh dear. You're not just going to look up and say, oh plane, <laughs> the airport is about 30 miles from where you live. Wait for me, plane. Can you just hold on? You're not, you're not, I mean, you can make a phone call. Call the airline and say, listen, I woke up late. I, I got to take this flight. I cannot miss this flight. And the air stewardess will tell you, you got to get here. We cannot hold the plane for you. And what are you going to do? You're going to get up. You're probably not going to brush your teeth or call me here. You're going to pack whatever you had in your bag. And you are running after that plane. You are, you're going to get there. Somehow, some way, you're going to make that flight. Yet you think you will put that much effort in a goofy flight to take you to God only knows where for no re real reason. But you won't put that effort into receiving the gift that will save your faith in these last days. The gift of the prayer language. Again, this gift, I, this is in fact, I'm emphasizing this because this is completely different than the different kinds of tongues gift that we're talking about in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4 to 11. You can have two Christians in the same room. They both believe God. They both are saved. They both love Jesus. They both have Bibles. One has the energy to pursue God like a ravenous deer who panteth near the water. God, I want you. I love you. I'm getting up. I'm, I'm serving you. I'm, I'm, I'm seeking you. I want you. You have an appetite. And the other Christian who's in the same exact room, who loves the same God, who's been saved by the same Holy Spirit, has no appetite has no desire. Uh, uh. Is church over yet? Because you, 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 you do not have the fire for your head. That fire is dynamite. That's the igniter. You got to beg God for that. I'm telling you. And see, somebody has a problem with the fact that I'm saying beg. Why do we got to beg God? Why do we got to beg God? Why do we have to do it that way? Why can't he? He, he could just get, I don't have to beg. But you'll beg everybody else, right? You beg your boyfriend to stay with you. You beg your husband to stay with you. You beg your wife to stay with you. You beg everybody and everything. You will beg, but you won't beg God for a precious gift to to let Him know that you're serious about it. I want to tell you a story very quickly. And this that I, I I have to, because I, I you know we're talking about this. I'm gonna share my baptism experience. <clears throat> I received the baptism of the Holy Ghost within six months after I got saved. Some people receive the baptism of the, Holy, uh, of, of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues the same time that they were saved. That was not me. <clears throat> Pardon me. I got saved, um, radically saved, born again, fully submitted and surrendered my life to Jesus Christ, but did not know anything about the baptism of the Holy Spirit until the Lord directed me to a home church at that time in my very early walk. And I'm so glad he did, because I knew nothing about God, nothing about Jesus, nothing about the Bible, nothing about Christianity, Christian walk, talk, nothing. Had no church in me whatsoever. And so uh, one day when I was attending the service of this new church that the Lord had led me to, uh, the pastor said, now after today's service, we're going to be praying for people. And if you'd like to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, just come forth. I'll, I'll, as a young Christian on fire, so on fire for the things of God, thank you, Jesus. I uh, I was excited. Oh, I'm, I, 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 you know, at the time, all I could say was that something lit up in me. I like, if I wasn't awake, which I already was, but if I wasn't awake, that I, 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 there was an immediate, like, 
the Holy Spirit just got a hold of me. You know, say that's you. You got to go get that. And I just got lit up. I just got so excited. That's all. Oh yes, I'm looking forward to the end of the service. Service was great. Make my way up to the front, man. I'm. They had everybody standing in the line. They had their elders and their pastors who was explaining the instructions on how to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They said, "Okay, now listen." Everyone received Jesus as Lord. You believe Jesus Christ as Lord. He's your Savior. You're saved. All right. The gift of the Holy Spirit is for you. What we're going to do, we're going to lay hands on you, just like the Bible uh, has described how, how, how the apostles laid hands on the believers and they received the gift of the Holy Spirit. All you have to do is yield. All you have to do is yield your tongue. And so I'm standing there I'm like, okay, how do I yield my tongue? What does this mean to yield my tongue? I, I don't, what do you, yield, okay, yield. How do I yield my tongue? And so they go down the line and people are laying hands and suddenly you hear people speaking in tongues. I'm like, wow, this is crazy. I'm next. Oh my gosh, how's it going to feel? And I'm just, oh man, I'm so excited. My palms are sweating. I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm ready for this, Lord. What is this going to be like? And finally, the, you know, a couple of elders came up to me. I, I believe they were husband and wife. And they said, okay, you know, and they explained it again. We're going to lay hands on you. We're going to ask the Lord to, you know, we're, we're going to ask that the Lord baptize you in the Holy Spirit. Don't speak English. Don't speak Spanish, which is fine. I don't speak Spanish anyway. Like, don't speak English or Spanish. Just yield your tongue. It's so, all right. My mind's racing now a mile a minute. What does it mean to yield my tongue? So I close my eyes, expecting something miraculous to take place. And nothing happened when they laid hands on me. Well, they had to dig in a little deeper for me. They started to pray in the Spirit themselves. And they're, and they're going off their violent in prayer. They got their hands. And now I'm feeling the pressure of their hand on my head. And yield your tongue, sweetheart, is what they started to say. Just yield to the Holy Spirit. I said, and finally I spoke and said, what does it mean to yield? What does that mean? And they said, well, just move your tongue. And so I said, move my tongue. What does this mean? And so I got so confused. And they eventually gave up. They stood with me for I don't know how long, 10, 15 minutes or so. And so they, they left me with the following. The wife, the, 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 the elder lady, apparently, with her husband. She looks at me and she says, it's okay, sweetheart. I thought that I was going to go to hell when I didn't receive the baptism of the, or, or, you know, when I didn't have the evidence of speaking in tongues. Everything's fine. You know, you, you're not going to go to hell. And she walked away. <laughs> and I'm a new Christian. I'm, what, I'm, I'm devastated. I could not believe, I was dumbfounded. I, it felt like I got hit over the head and punched in the gut. And I walked out of there very confused, very, uh, dazed like uh you know what's what's going on here and i i started to cry i i made my way to the car it was raining that day and i was so glad it was raining because i sh was shedding tears by the time i went from the church to the parking lot it was a very large church so i made my way to the parking lot by the time i reached my car i'm sobbing so the rain was kind of covering up my tears and i'm starting to drive home and i am i'm just beside myself and i'm crying out to the lord as i'm driving home lord why didn't I get the, uh, the, 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 the gift of tongues, the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Why? Why? And I started to beg him. I'm talking to him. I'm crying out to him. Listen, I'm just telling you what I went through. I'm telling you what some of you need to go through. But see, I didn't go through this in, in acting. I meant every word. I'm sobbing before the Lord saying, why? I want to receive this gift. I want everything you have for me. What is this? How come I didn't receive? I don't understand. Please, Lord. Please, I ask, I beg of you in the name of Jesus. Bless me. Give me this gift of the Holy Spirit. And so it was only maybe a, I don't even know, within 10 miles from the church to my little apartment that I lived at with my husband at the time. And we're at this, well, he's still the same husband. But at the time in my early walk, we lived in a small apartment. At the time, we only had... Our, our, you know, our, our eldest son, Ignacio, who was just a little top, maybe three years old or so. And um, I was just still sobbing. I was still a mess. Waiting, just crying out to, to, to God. God, please answer me. And I, we had lived near a public school. So I parked in this elementary public school parking lot just to, to take a moment. Because at the time, my husband wasn't saved. I was like, I can't go home. I'm a new believer. He's going to think these people did something to me. And... He's not, I, I didn't want to be a bad witness. So I couldn't go in just the way I was. And I wasn't done sobbing. 
But I knew I had to conduct myself because I had to be home. That my husband was expecting me. And so I parked in this parking lot. as a new Christian. And I'm, I'm feeling pitiful. And I, I felt really bad. It was not even self-pity. I truly felt like I just, I was hurt. I didn't understand. And so I'm sobbing at the wheel. <laughs> and I had my Bible open. I remember I had opened up my Bible by this time after I parked. And I'm just sobbing there. And next thing I know, and I'm going to tell you as plainly as it happened to me, folks. The next thing I know in the midst of sobbing is that I literally felt a tapping on my shoulder. As if to say, look. And it wasn't even as if to say, because in that tapping, it was literally, look at this. Look at what you're doing. It was so supernatural. So amazing and radical. But at the same time, to someone who probably would have been there, which nobody was there except me and the Lord and the Holy Spirit, it would have been like, what? You know, what happened? Nothing happened. No, something happened because, again, it literally, I felt the fingers of God, or I say the angel of the Lord, tapping me like this. Look what you're saying. Look what you're saying. Were the words. The Spirit, I received my prayer language. Now I'm telling you folks, listen, I was praying. I couldn't believe it. I has, when I when I realized in my in the midst of my tears, I immediately stopped crying. I said, oh, I'm praying in the Spirit. Oh. And but I was afraid to stop because I thought if I stopped, it wouldn't come back. So I tried it again and I, I, I prayed again. And by this time, I'm, I'm exuberant. The joy of the Lord overtook me in my car. I dried up my tears. I had to go home because by this time I'm running late. And I'm praying in the spirit. It was coming out so rapidly, so fast, literally rivers of life-giving water coming out. Fast, 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 fast. And I was praying so quickly and rapidly in the spirit, in this beautiful prayer language, this gift of tongues that the Lord has bestowed upon me. And I, I got home, my husband, you know, he met with me and, and then we talked and he had to go in the shower. And I'm thinking, good, go in the shower because I got to get this gift out. The moment he leaves the room, I'm starting to pray in the spirit. It's not, not loud, but just loud enough that I was just, it was rapid. It was so freeing. It was the Holy Spirit. I had received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Listen, when I say you got to beg God, that's all I knew. I was a Christian who was not only radically saved, I was young in the faith. I wanted God. I wanted to run after him. For some who are asking for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, they're not even sure if they want God. They're not sure if they want to run after God, yet they're asking him. You're never going to get it. You have to be as real, as true, as serious about this as you are about your salvation in him, your faith, your walk and being saved. There's no different of that same fervor, intensity, running after the things of God, including this promise that is, it's, it's for you. It's for you. It's for all of us. It goes back. Listen, I got to go back here. I hope you all were blessed by that because I, I just got blessed all over again. Thank you, Lord, receiving and remembering that. But um, the different kinds of tongues and the utterance gifts and the spiritual gifts and manifestations from God, the Holy Spirit, is not the same with tongues of fire as given in the book of Acts chapter 2 and Jude verse 20. This gift of the speaking in tongues for the edification of yourself, again, according to Jude verse 20, praying in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, this is for you to build yourself up as a man, woman, child of God. This is so important. Do, if you neglect this as a Christian, I'll, you're, not, you're not making it. I'm not, I'm not going to even ask you, how are you making it? You're just not making it. You're not on fire for the things of God. You really couldn't care less. You're a very part of the world. Th if you want to know why, this is the reason why. You're not even serious. you got to get serious with the things of God so you can bestow and give it to you. The different kinds of tongues, though, can happen through you. But it's not going to... Th this is not your... Your, uh, you know, your, your baptism. This is a gift that is given at the will of the Holy Spirit for that moment. For the purpose of the edification of the church. Not for you. I mean, you may receive, but it's not. It's for the purpose of the church. And check this out, even for the unbeliever. I want to read this to you. Go with me very quickly. I'm looking at the time here. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 22. And I, I'm going to... Just go ahead and add the interpretation of tongues as well, which is the third utterance gift 
in the spiritual gifts and manifestations from God the Holy Spirit. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 22 through 25. Let's read. Therefore, tongues are for a sign not to those who believe, but to unbelievers. But prophesying is not for unbelievers, but for those who believe. Therefore, if the whole church comes together in one place, and all speak with tongues, and there comes in those who are uninformed, or unbelievers, will they not say that you are out of your mind? But if all prophesy, now this particular word in the Greek, prophesy, means to interpret. It literally is the interpretation of tongues. Check this out. It's not the same gift of prophecy, although it could be, but it's not in this case. The word interpret, or excuse me, the word prophecy in the New King James Version in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 12. Uh, excuse me. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 24. <clears throat> but if all prophesy, it literally means to interpret. It is that third gift in the utterance gift. It's not, I got to make this clear. I have to make it clear because I said it could be, but it's not. It is not the prophetic utterance gift here. This is interpretation of tongues, even though it says prophesy in verse 24. <clears throat> but if all prophesy, meaning to, meaning to interpret, and an unbeliever or an uninformed person comes in, he is convinced by all. He is convicted by all, and thus the secrets of his heart are revealed. And so falling down on his face, he will worship God and report that God is truly among you. That is the result of different kinds of tongues in the body of Christ, in the church, in the congregation, for all to hear, and the interpretation of that tongues. Can you imagine? I mean, let's just think about this for a second. Can you imagine that someone in your congregation stood up, they started speaking in a very different tongue that you've never heard of. Someone else stands up and interprets, or it could be the same person. And they, man, you got to make sure this is from God and not, not you just making stuff up, folks. I'm telling you, you don't ever want to play with the things of God. But let's say you have, you know, you received the tongue and the interpretation, or someone else stands up for the interpretation and you give the tongue. And, you know, the interpretation is thus saith the Lord. There's a man here by the name of James Woods, and uh, the Lord has heard your cry. He has been with you since the day you were born. He knows the current sin that you're in, and he, he puts it out there, the kind of sin that he's in. Uh, and today you have been called here. God has sent his holy host to bring you into this house to get you saved. For if you do not get saved, you will perish in your sins. And there is a very specific divine word. Listen, it says here, verse 25, thus the secrets of his heart are revealed. And so falling down in his face, he will worship God and report that God is truly among you. It will bring forth a repentance. It will bring forth salvation and declaration of God. Glory, literally to God from even the unbeliever and unsaved. For the purpose of them getting saved. The, 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 the different kinds of tongues is not just to show off your gift of tongues, your spiritual language. That's something else. This is done to glorify God. Now, you could use your spiritual language according to the book of Acts, according to Jude verse 20. That's not the different kinds of tongues. Even in the congregation, you may glorify the God. Excuse me, you may glorify the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You may glorify God in your prayer language, but you're not giving a different kind of tongue. You cannot stand up with this spiritual gift of the tongues of fire that God gave you and say that's a different kind of tongue. You will not receive an interpretation of it. Because this is something, again, the different kinds of tongue is something very specific for that moment. Spiritual gift and manifestation of the Holy Spirit wrought through you or someone else. Whether baptized in the Holy Spirit or not. Ain't that something? To, give, to bring forth a word for the unbeliever or for even the church. So, whoo, all right. Well, praise the Lord. Um, God uses... Each of these nine gifts to speak supernaturally through the person he chooses as he wills. As he wills. And the gifts are intended to edify, to exhort, and to be a sign. And I will, we will end it with this.
1 Corinthians chapter 14. Verse 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 12. It reads, let's read it together. Even so you, since you are zealous for spiritual gifts, let it be for the edification of the church that you seek to excel. Even so, since you are zealous for spiritual gifts, be zealous, friends. Desire the spiritual gifts. Even the Apostle Paul stated that if, if you, you know, if you desire spiritual gifts, that's great. But, you know, desire that you prophesy among, above all the gifts, above all these gifts, desire the gift of prophecy. And you could read that in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 1 and 2. But again, I leave you with verse 12. Even so, since you are zealous for spiritual gifts, let it be for the edification of the church that you seek to excel. So these spiritual gifts are for the edification of the church. The gift of the tongues of fire for your head to build up your faith, praying in the Holy Spirit is for yourself. There's an edification for you. But when it comes to the gifts of the Spirit, hear me folks. Please hear me. When it comes to the gifts of the Spirit, the manifestation of the gifts of the Spirit, when it comes to the, the gifts of the Father, when it comes to the calls uh, on, on a believer's life, when it comes to the offices and gifts of the Son, God the Son, Jesus Christ, this is all for the edification of the body of Christ. This is not for you, even though we will receive from it. It is not for me, even though we're going to receive from it. We're going to receive the blessing too. I mean, I'll give you all an example. I'm being used today and every Monday or no, Tuesday uh, in these live school of ministry classes. We've been doing it for a few years now. And, uh, you know, I'm learning right along with you. I really am. There's stuff that has been taught a lot of words, a lot of a lot of the Lord's come, uh, a lot of the Lord comes out. And as I'm teaching you, I'm within myself saying, oh, I had no idea. Really? That's cool. OK, I learned something. I'm learning right along with you. So even though we will be used in these capacities, doesn't mean we can't receive the blessing, but that is not the but the purpose of us in the call or receiving the call in the office or having the Holy Spirit manifest these spiritual gifts through us is not just to edify ourselves. It is for the edification of the church. If you seek to excel, you do well. If you seek to grow further, you know, be promoted in the kingdom of God. If you seek to be used more mightier, more mightily in the things of God, that's a good thing. He'd rather you seek to go further with him than in this world any day. And he'll grant it to you. He'll give it to you. But it's not for your glory. It is not for your vain glory. It is not for our so-called glory or vanity or, be, you know, we want to look cool because preachers of L.A. and preachers of Atlanta look so cool. And I want to look like them. No, you're, you, you are, it's, it, that is under a horrific mindset. And you will, you, you will, God will tell you what he told the sorcerer through the Apostle Peter when he sought to take upon himself the gift of the Holy Spirit. In the book of Acts, chapter 8, I said I was going to leave you with 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 12. Don't, don't be scared. We, we, we're, at, we're at the end of the class, okay? But i got to put this up there. The book of Acts, chapter 8, verse 14. Now, when the apostles who were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them, who, when, who when they had come down, prayed for them, that they might receive the Holy Spirit. That was the baptism of the Holy Spirit that they went down for. For as yet, he had fallen upon none of them. Again, talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. 
They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus, meaning baptized in water. They have not yet received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Verse 17. Then they laid hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. And when Simon saw that through the laying on of the apostles' hands the Holy Spirit was given, he offered them money. Now Simon, very quickly, was a sorcerer. A sorcerer who practiced sorcery in the city, who astonished many people in the city of Samaria, claiming that he was someone great. But then he started to hear the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ through the apostles, and uh, he was moved, and he actually had a confession of faith. However, he still was not, you know, he still needed to have his mind renewed, apparently. And uh, anyway, so when he offered the apostles money, saying, Give me this power also, that anyone on whom I lay hands may receive the Holy Spirit. But Peter said to him, Your money perish with you. Because you thought that the gift of God could be purchased with money, you have neither part nor portion in this matter, for your heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent, therefore, of this your wickedness, and pray that God, if perhaps the thought of your heart may be forgiven you. For I see that you are poisoned by bitterness and bound by iniquity. This is amazing, because here you had the Apostle Paul, or the Apostle, um, the Apostle Peter, operating in the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, the discerning of spirits. Uh, he, he was operating in, 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 uh, in prophecy, and he was preaching. He was, he was bringing forth a harsh rebuke. So you saw how, how angry, say the jealousy of the Holy Spirit mm, coming out of the Apostle Peter to, you know, to rebuke Simon, the former sorcerer. And that's where Simon responded in verse 24 and said, Pray, pray to the Lord for me that none of the things which you have spoken may come upon me. He got so frightened. Because of the conviction of the Holy Spirit being spoken through the Apostle Peter when he thought he can use God's power, the, the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, in this case, in these times, many are thinking they could use the spiritual gifts and manifestations and they could purchase it with money. They can receive the anointing. That's not the way it works. This is all by the will of the Father. This is all by the will of the Holy Spirit. This is all by the will of the Father. This is all by the will of the Son. You cannot be... None of us can hold the office of an apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, or teacher unless Jesus Christ has called you. None of us can uh, have the call of a prophet, minister, perceiver, teacher, exhorter, giver, ruler, mercy, or compassion unless God the Father has called us. And none of us can operate in, or manifest the gifts of the Holy Spirit, such as the word of wisdom, word of knowledge, discerning of spirits, gifts of healings, workings of miracles, faith, supernatural faith, prophecy, different kinds of tongues or interpretation of tongues, unless the Holy Spirit rots it through us. If you understand the class today, will you please say amen. If you didn't understand it, will you please say Anita, do that all over again. No, I'm kidding. No, the broadcast will be archived. Today's class will be archived and we give God praise for that. So you'll be able to go over these classes and go over them. They're at your disposal. Don't walk around bored. You know, you're on your way to work, friends. What do I listen to? What do I listen to? And you got Sirius XM radio, you got AM, you got FM, you got news talk radio, and you got soap operas on the TV, you got junk on the radio stations. T turn it all off. Turn it all off and, and replay this broadcast. Replay the, the former school uh, classes that we've done. Replay the end time ministry broadcast that we do. You have food to feed you for years. And I mean that. We have years of teachings, preachings, ministerial classes and broadcasts that are available right now, archived. Get it while you can. Because there's coming a time where there's going to be a, a new society, a new system that will arise under the Antichrist. And all of this, you, you will not be able to have access to it the way you do now. Please, take it as a warning. Take advantage of what you have now. Don't take advantage and, and, and ignore it. Take advantage of it and receive it. Okay, be greedy with it. You can be greedy with this and feed yourself so that you can feed others. All right, my friends, before I continue, the Lord bless you. <laughs> I can keep going, but I'm going to stop. 
The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious unto you. Lift up his countenance unto you and give you his peace. Father, we're so great, very grateful uh, on, on, on how you taught us today, what you have taught us today. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for teaching us and opening up the eyes of our understanding to be able to, to, to receive the teaching and, and to walk in it, Lord. Father, we desire zealously for spiritual gifts so that we, we may excel not only in the things of you and the things of the Father and the Son, but to bring forth edification to the body of Christ in these last days. Oh, Father, use us as you desire. In Jesus' name, ah, be in agreement with me and say amen. Amen. God bless you all, my friends. Have a wonderful day. In Jesus' name, please help support the work of the School of Ministry. Don't log off until you've helped support us. Help support the classes that are available to you. In the name of Jesus, log on to our website, www.openyoureyespeople.com or www.emoaf.org, E-M-O-A-F dot O-R-G. Put a donation in for today's class. Put in a donation. Mail a donation to P.O. Box 9570, Rancho Cucamonga, California, 91701. I look forward to coming to you again. Until then, have a wonderful day. Be sure to tune in tomorrow at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time for our End Time Ministry broadcast live 1 p.m. tomorrow. Have a wonderful day. In Jesus' name, in place of worship. Bye-bye. Oh, and I will